Hello, dearest friends, and welcome back to my well-being series. If you don't know anything about this series, feel free to watch the brief introduction referenced in the description below. Also, if you haven't done it already, please consider subscribing to my channel and share it with whomever you think may benefit from its contents. As always, feel free to send me your thoughts in the comments section. I cannot stress it enough. Your feedback and support are invaluable. This video is the very first in the previously mentioned series. It seeks to touch upon an issue about which we barely hear anything these days, namely moderation. I find that ours is a time of troubling extremes. You shouldn't need too much time to see if you agree with me or not. I mean, just look at our polarized social, economic, and political environment. Or notice the raw intensity of our debates and disagreements, be they within our own families, in the mainstream media, or on every social platform. After a very short while, you realize that moderation is an undeservedly forgotten virtue. In any case, my intention here is not to idolize moderation. As a student of philosophy, I shy away from clear-cut judgments. I love to look at both halves of the glass. Therefore, today, I would like to share with you a few thoughts about the actual benefits and potential pitfalls of moderation. Let me start with an obvious observation. Philosophers, psychologists, poets, sages, and religious figures in almost all known cultures have praised moderation to the sky. Moderation is best in all things, said the Greek poet Hesiod. The philosopher Plato insisted time and again that the man who makes everything that leads to happiness is the man of moderation. Shakespeare has a friar give Romeo this practical advice concerning his burning passion for Juliet. Love each other in moderation. That is the key to long-lasting love. Too fast is as bad as too slow. St. Paul's version of the same counsel is, let your moderation be known unto all men. And should you think that it's only the West that sang the praises of moderation, here's an actual quote from Gautama Buddha's first sermon. These two extremes ought not to be practiced. Addiction to indulgence of sense pleasures, which is low, coarse, unworthy, and unprofitable. An addiction to self-mortification, which is painful, unworthy, and unprofitable. When avoiding both these extremes, the perfect one has realized the middle path. These authors may have had different reasons for praising moderation, but their intention was always the same. They all wanted us to lead balanced, meaningful, happy lives. And yet, could moderation ever become overrated? If yes, to what extent should we refrain from it? If not, how can this ancient virtue speak to us in the 21st century? Here, I would invite you not to open any book, but to look at yourself and see if you can discover the answer from your own experience. I would also urge you to raise questions along the following lines. How many times did you tell yourself, no, I'm not going to drink that much, and then the next day you hated yourself again while groping for that much needed cup of coffee? How many times did you promise to stay away from cake, but then a mere glance at the restaurant menu made that promise futile? How many times did you plan to wake up at 6 a.m. every morning and start the day with a refreshing workout or jog, just to find out yet again that sleep is a much sweeter option? How many times did you say to your mom or spouse, today I'll play video games only for one hour, just to discover 10 hours later that everybody went to bed and dinner is appallingly cold? How many times did you swear that you would be more careful and save some money, but the very next day felt that the Armani watch you saw just a few days ago, and of course the new iPhone, would certainly show how you really are, 
accomplished, sophisticated, irresistible in fact. How many times did you suspect that the five-year-old car sitting in your driveway, although running fine and not so shabby looking, is nothing in comparison to the latest model? On a much graver note, how many times did you angrily utter hurtful words, for which you later had to apologize? In general, how often did you do things that you knew you were going to regret? The probable and most optimistic answer to some of these questions is at least once. Yet all of these examples indicate an immoderate behavior. This is when our speech, decisions, and actions are blatantly rash, impulsive, irrational. Without a doubt, on such occasions, the lack of moderation does nothing but damage our souls. But then, should we pursue moderation at any cost? I would say not so quickly, for there have been times in our life when we did behave moderately and later came to regret it too. The irony is that this particular regret is not necessarily faulty. We all have experienced situations where we wished we had behaved more immoderately. Have you never felt that perhaps you should have studied a bit less and hung out with your friends more? That you should have asked that person out despite your paralyzing fear of rejection and no matter how ridiculous the proposal may have seemed at the moment? That you should have traveled more and worried less about mortgages or pension funds? That you should have tasted life's delights at an age when no doctor would be concerned about your cholesterol levels and hip mobility? That you should have quit your tedious job and pursued a career perhaps not so well paid but much more impactful towards others and more meaningful to yourself. The truth is that you didn't do any of this because you were afraid of losing it. And so you stuck to being moderate. Because that's what your relatives, teachers, pastors and leaders told you. Because you were, or tried to be, a good kid, a reliable adult, a responsible citizen. I would therefore conclude that moderation is indeed necessary whenever it has us resist the temptation to waste resources, time, energy, and ultimately ourselves. But at the same time, moderation can easily become an impediment to the understandable desire to live richer, more memorable lives. Not to mention that moderation could delay, if not hinder, our self-development. How should we proceed then? Honestly, I don't know. Yet, here's a couple of ideas worth contemplating. First, we should never stop trying to know ourselves, to figure out who we really are and what we truly desire. This improved self-knowledge to be gained for sure as a result of many and not always successful efforts will help us in more than one way. It will enable us to better discern what's good and bad for us personally. We should then be able to evaluate every situation and decide how far to go in our moderation or immoderateness. A greater and more honest introspection would also give us the ability to see through our immediate unthinking impulses, to take them for what they are and to resist those that may hurt us. While always proceeding with steadfastness, patience and care. The second idea is that we could, and should, be more moderate about moderation itself. What do I mean by this? We should continuously nourish a courageous attitude towards life. We should not let our moderation prevent us from entering or exploring unfamiliar territories because we may get hurt or because the risks are too high. Yes, we may find new situations and experiences uncomfortable, disappointing, painful, even so, we should be a bit more trustful that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. That at the end of each anxious struggle with the unknown, we would find ourselves more mature, more grateful, more compassionate, and therefore more beautiful. We should not be instinctively afraid of the unpredictable, but rather dare to embrace it, and extravagantly so. For life can be much more surprising in its rewards than our moderate angels would have us believe.